Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Make yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Today we have very interesting stories and one of them is about an entitled mother-in-law who insists on making her son and daughter-in-law who just left college pay her mortgage. Please subscribe if you haven't and I hope you enjoy it. Entitled mom think I owe her £10,000 compensation because her son grew up to be a thug, just like I said he would. Apologies but this one's long as there is some context to get out of the way. Years ago, my cousin, Lucy, and I had a strained relationship because she let her son, Damien, do anything he wanted, never punished him, and brushed away anything he ever did as, boys will be boys or, he's just a kid, etc. It came to a breaking point between us when Lucy and Damien were visiting years ago. Damien was 12 at the time, and my daughter, Maggie, was 9. Maggie was sitting happily playing her Xbox in her bedroom upstairs. While Lucy and I were talking, Damien got bored and wandered off. A few minutes later and I hear screaming and crying. I rush up to Maggie's room to find her on the floor, blood all over her face, while Damien is just casually playing the Xbox. It turns out he came up and demanded a turn on the Xbox. Maggie said sure, just let me finish the level. So he snatched the controller from her hand and smashed her around the face with it, then shoved her out of the way. I rushed her to the hospital. Luckily it was worse than it looked, and there was no lasting damage, and I live in the UK so no medical bills. But I was furious. I told Lucy what Damien did and she shrugged and said, you know how boys are with their video games, she should have just let him. I told her in no uncertain terms that she and her son were not allowed anywhere near me or my family. We got into a huge fight over this, where she of course tried to absolve her little angel of anything. So I lost it and told her if she didn't discipline him and teach him boundaries, she would end up raising a monster who would grow up to be a thug or worse, which infuriated her. This caused fallout with the family for years, largely because Lucy lied and told everyone her son and Maggie had just been play fighting and that's how she got hurt, it was just an accident and I was overreacting. After a few years, everyone forgot. I still forbade Lucy or her hellspawn from coming anywhere near me. Several other family members did the same. I can't imagine why. Fast forward to a little before the pandemic. Damien was 19. Just like I predicted, he soon learned that thanks to his mother, he was bulletproof as she would never believe he did anything wrong. So his behavior got worse and worse, to the point where he was kicked out of every school in the area and had to go to a special school. I got a call from Frank, Lucy's brother, telling me Lucy had been rushed to hospital, that he knows we don't talk, but Lucy was seriously hurt and he wanted to let me know. Despite our history, I went to visit Lucy, accompanied by Frank and his wife. Before this, we had been really close and I was upset to hear she was hurt. When I got there, I was shocked by what I saw. She was really banged up, her face swollen, bruises all up her arms. It turned out Damien had done this. She was really struggling for money, and he refused to get a job, so she finally tried to lay down the law and tell him to get a job or she was throwing him out, so he attacked her almost dislocated her jaw, it was horrific. Now, we had a history, but at this point, none of that mattered. I was worried and sad for her. I immediately asked her if she needed help with anything. She seemed surprised, but we ended up all having a really heartwarming chat, with her saying how much it meant to her that I came to see her. I thought maybe we were turning a corner and could repair our relationship. We had been somewhat really close as kids. Oh, how wrong I was. A few weeks later, I started getting blasted on social media and getting nasty messages and texts telling me what an awful person I was and how could I do what I did to Lucy. I was confused, I hadn't done anything, I called Frank, he had no idea either but said he would look into it. Turns out Lucy had told everyone I had come to the hospital and mocked her, gloating, I told you so, while she bawled her eyes out. I confronted Lucy about it, asking her how she could lie like that. She hit back that this was all my fault, it's what I deserved. If I knew this was going to happen why didn't I do more to help her? She then demanded I pay her at least £10,000 for damages I caused. Like, WTF? She lied to everyone because she couldn't stand that I had been right and decided to punish me for it. For months I endured hateful messages from family members who believed her lies. Not all my family believed her, of course, and Frank and his wife cleared things up about what really happened. He managed to record Lucy admitting that she lied, which got most off my back, but there were still a few relatives who had it in their heads that, 
There's no smoke without fire, and I must have done something to make her say what she did. But they're all distant relatives on her side, so who cares? Then the pandemic rolled around. Everyone forgot the petty squabbles Lucy and her lies caused. But, last month, we held a family gathering at my parents, the first in years due to the pandemic. Lucy showed up. Thankfully Damien was absent on account of serving a prison sentence for aggravated assault and battery, unrelated to what he did to his mother. I went to ask Lucy how she was doing. The first words out of her mouth were, you need to pay me what you owe me. If you don't, I'm taking you to court. I need that money, it's the least you can do for ruining my life. She followed me around the party demanding I pay her, telling everyone who would listen that I had ruined her life. Wow. What a happy family reunion. Reddit reply. Op. First, your nephew is a monster of his mother's own making, of that there is no doubt. You did the absolutely the right thing by banning him and his mother from your house to protect your child. Go no contact with your cousin and if she is there, leave. She shows up leave. In short make it very clear, if she is there, or shows up, you are not going to stick around and be harassed by her. And you are sorry if it means that you will not be around so much, nothing personal, but she is not worth your mental or emotional health. I would also be interested in what a solicitor in your area would think about the situation and what all she is doing. Seems like she is slandering and defaming, ruining your good name, and maybe a legal notice for her to stop, maybe a wake-up call for her to either stop or face far worse legal consequences due to her actions. But beyond that, you will need to keep tabs on your nephew. Not cause you are concerned, but more for your own safety. Things like when is he due to be released and where he is located at. That way you can be better prepared, for if he shows up. Also keep the door locked. It is better to be prepared and have plans and never need them, than to be caught off guard and need them. Entitled mother-in-law thinks DH and I owe her a place to live when we buy our own home. My husband, 32M, and I, 28F, are recent college graduates and have already made plans to move out from mother-in-law, 65, house that we've lived in for five years. For clarification, mother-in-law wanted us to move in to help her and her husband pay for the mortgage payment so they wouldn't lose their home and a major point she used to convince us was that we would also benefit by not having to pay for our expensive apartment things were fine for the most part for the first couple of years. But the closer we got to graduation and to buying our own home, the more entitled she got regarding her moving in. At first, we laughed it off and just went about our day. But eventually, things got out of hand and now she all but demands that she move in so she can divorce her husband, collect half of the house, which she has no plans to contribute to our household, and stay with us for the rest of her life. She's a highly unreasonable person and husband and I always felt it was best not to open the can of worms and outright tell her no because she's more talk than action and we didn't really think she would get a divorce anyways. Also, we knew she would start a massive fight that would result in us having to move abruptly and cause unnecessary drama while we were finishing our degrees. The problem comes in recent time when we've really sat her down and explained that we need some time to ourselves in our own home and maybe her staying with her husband and doing reverse mortgage wouldn't be a bad choice as she can come and visit as often as she likes. Following all of these conversations, she becomes indignant and says things like, I'll just move out and rent an apartment until you guys are ready for me to move in after a year or so. Or, I've given so many years of my life to my kids, and nobody cares what happens to me. I feel like she's doing this to bully us into giving her a place in our home because we know she won't have enough from the house to last in an apartment very long. I also feel like the second she knows we're closing, she'll initiate a divorce so she truly has nowhere else to go. I know we're just going to have to tell her no when the time comes and whatever happens, happens, but I also feel like if she initiated a divorce and we don't give her a place to live, she'll blame us completely and the relationship with us won't be the same ever. Additional info. My husband is 100% on my side with me and does not want his mom to live with us and is willing to do whatever necessary to ensure our happiness above all. Also, she didn't work much in life so her social security checks are low so the best option would be to stay with her husband and work out their house situation together because even if she sold, she wouldn't have enough to sustain herself for very long. Reply. Rip off the band-aid. You have to tell her, mom we appreciate you and dad allowing us to share your home while we finished our education. It has been much appreciated. We are ready for our next phase of life. Once we secure good jobs, we will look for our own home. We need to adult and be just us. 
If at some point we have children we hope we can do as much for them as you have for us. You will not be living with us however. We need to live our own adult lives, unencumbered by anyone else living with us. We love you but we don't want you living with us the rest of your life. That is not fair to us. We won't help you divorce dad nor will we rescue you from this home. You need to figure this out with your husband not with your child. Just met an entitled mom who called me arrogant for not letting her kids pet my anxious dog. I moved to my current home almost two years ago. We have a big house and yard and therefore we decided to get a big dog BC we felt capable of providing him a decent life. His name is Milo and he just turned one Milo was rescued as a puppy. He was abused and neglected before. There's a local animal rescue team and my parents have financially supported them for a while so once we decided to adopt another dog we got Milo who was rescued from them and he has grown into a big and healthy guy since. However, he has his flaws. He can be very anxious towards strangers. Especially kids. If a stranger gets too close to him he will bite. It has gotten better over time but sometimes he still gets anxious. And again, especially kids if they're being loud and energetic. So I see it as my responsibility to have certain control over that in order to not harm anyone. No matter how much he has improved, I was walking him today. My village is pretty small so we just see a few people passing by. He doesn't get nervous around them anymore. Until three kids and a woman walk by, seeing them from far away, and one of the kids immediately comes hopping towards my dog, who was already in a defense position, and I stopped the little boy just in time by being like, hey stop. I tried to be gentle and told him about Milo not liking strangers and that he can bite. But I told him I have another dog at home who would love to get to know him. The boy was kind of accepting of it. I tried to cheer him up by saying, maybe we will see each other when I'm walking around with my other dog. He's really fluffy and loves to be pet, and everything was cool until another kid came hopping and my dog backed away. I was just like, oh careful careful, and the boy pushed that little girl aside. The mom came closer and without me even speaking a word she just said, hey, why are you not letting them pet it? They love dogs, so I politely explained how it is. That Milo can be dangerous even though he may not look like he is. She just shook her head and said something along the lines of, well if he's so dangerous you shouldn't walk him around the village. I mean Milo hid behind me and with an encouraging face after her mom's words, the little girl tried to get close to me so I said no. In a stern voice and held my dog close to me. That made the girl walk to her mom, the boy slowly following. That entitled mom looked at me as if I just destroyed her life. She was mad. I decided I was uncomfortable so I said bye and walked away. She yelled from a distance, arrogant poss you can go somewhere else with your dog instead of abusing children, so yay. I did it, guys. I found the village, Karen. Edit. It's also important to say that when we are walking it's only in places where the road isn't narrow and where we can keep a certain distance from other people. So let me tell you, if people are walking close to other people that's a choice. Reddit reply. You might want to consider a harness that says, please do not pet or something like that to keep your dog safe from others. I have seen them on Amazon. Granted, you will still need to deal with small children but maybe the parents will see the harness and tell their kids to back off. People should always ask to pet an unknown dog and not just assume it is friendly. Shame on that lady for putting you and your dog in that position. So, a couple of days ago while I was working my shift at the local pool, I'm a lifeguard. A small party of around 12 people and 2 adults came in and I didn't think much. I thought maybe they made a party reservation and I wasn't informed all was fine I was watching the kids, around the 5 to 7 age, making sure they didn't go into the big pool, without an adult as it was very deep and had a slide connecting to it. Mostly the kids stayed in the kiddie pool until a little boy who could not have been more than 4 started walking into the pool alone. I thought the adult was just behind him but after like 3 minutes of doing other things like cleaning the floor I noticed the kid was still alone and I asked him to go back to his parents. He just said okay and started waking to the kiddie pool then a couple of minutes later, a 40 something year old lady tapped me on the shoulder. Entitled mom. Excuse me me. Yes ma'am. Entitled mom. How come my kids can't owe into the pool it's his friend's birthday. Me. Sorry ma'am but kids under 6 cannot go into the big pool by themselves. Entitled mom. But why? Me. Sorry it's just pool policy so that way nothing can happen if we don't see. Entitled mom. 
Well it's your effing job to see them, boy. Me. Ma'am I'm sorry but it's either that or you have to leave. We can't compromise. Entitled mom. F you, I paid good money to be here, six and under was free entry, me. Ma'am there's no need to swear, she was still grabbing her daughter's hand and she looked very uncomfortable. Entitled mom. I say what the f I want to say. My son wants to go swimming and I need to watch my daughter. Me. Sorry ma'am, I can't do anything unless your son is in the pool with you. For someone over 14, you have to leave or stay in the kiddie pool or hot tub. Entitled mom. Fine. She then stormed over to the kiddie pool and rounded up the kids, she must have been the caretaker because the other lady who followed her, got chanced and from what I heard she yelled at our front desk girl and she almost broke down. She was like 16 and our supervisor was in the back with the maintenance crew and she didn't know about it until we told her. Thankfully, she hasn't come back yet sorry if it wasn't that exciting but we don't get many entitled people in our town.